What's up everybody and welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to talk about plans on how to live off of nearly a $3 million portfolio, $2,945,000 to be exact, how this whole will work, the annual income, different calculations, and why this is my plan, how I expect to achieve this, and everything that you might need to know so you can achieve goals that you might desire in order to reach them. So we've got a lot to go over in this video. I ask if you enjoy dividend stock investing, you subscribe to the channel and you turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos. And you can stick along with me on this journey and we can help each other out in our dividend stock investing timeline. But let's go ahead and get straight into it. So the first thing I want to talk about is using a calculator. So you can go ahead and calculate how much money you can invest, see what you are expected to make. Now you can't be exactly correct just because you can't expect the market to go up exactly 9% year over year, but on average, that's a good guess. And this is just an estimation on if you put in $1,000 right now, contributed another $500 every single month, your money was compounded annually, and you waited 30 years with a 9% return rate, you would have about $870,000 after about 30 years. Now you can go around and mess with these numbers. This is calculator.net. I'm not affiliated with them by any means. But if you want to go ahead and use bank rates, what you can do is you can go ahead and actually type in how much money you want to have and then your investment plan, you know how much you plan on contributing and different things like that, how often you can plan on contributing this money and then your rate of return and all these different things. It'll tell you how much you expect to make in a certain amount of time. And so you can go around and mess with these numbers yourself. But you might have heard me say $2.945 million, almost $3.45 million. And I've been a little bit, like, nearly shocked from it. And what I really mean from it is I don't actually plan on depositing $2.945 million in principle and just letting it sit. I plan on depositing a lot less than that and letting it grow and turn into $2.945 million. So let's go ahead and kind of look at an example. So here's an example of what you could expect if you invested for 20 years with a 10% share price appreciation, you invest about $500 a month, start with $1,000, and all these different numbers. You'll see, you'd expect over 20 years, your annual income would be about $7,556, and any balance about $435,000, you'd be getting really good returns. But if you step these numbers up just a little bit, you know, Maybe instead of investing just 500 a month, you actually go ahead and you invest 12,000 a year. You get some a lot better numbers. See, then you get to 940,000, and you'll see your annual contribution is about a thousand dollars a month. But here's how much you're actually investing. This is your principal, 10,000. You're getting these dividends and all of these good things. Now, principal increase your contribution. You could actually end up contributing only $240,000. Because twelve thousand times twenty, two hundred forty thousand dollars. But your portfolio ends at about nine hundred forty-seven thousand dollars. See, that's what I mean. Now, if you go ahead and you add another five years onto this, with these numbers, just another five years, okay, you're ending at one point seven million dollars. The longer that the time goes towards the end, you get huge expectations of growth. You wait 30 years, you're at that number, $2.968 million, okay? 3 times 12 is about 36. That means you invest about $360,000, but you end up with $2.968 million. See, this is why investing is the true way to financial freedom. So let me go ahead and show you some slides on how I plan on doing this. First off, let me go ahead and state dividend stocks are just historically better, okay? Because a lot of people look at dividend stocks and they're like, why would I pay to get 3% in dividends, 1%, 2%, whatever it might be, whenever I can go get these incredible gains, these returns on options trades or things like that. And the honest truth is those options trades, they're nice, but you have to be very consistent. You spend a lot of time and dividends are completely passive. And over the long term, stocks have historically shown that dividends provide greater, dividend stocks provide greater long-term returns and gains rather than non-paying dividend stocks and growth stocks. These dividend paying companies are usually more established with a huge foundation and moat, and they have the ability to perform at better sustainable rates, keyword sustainable, and these growth stocks can get hit big 
with no recovery, no returns. Like we're seeing a lot of funds right now, like ARK Invest, Kathy Wood. Her fund is going incredibly down. Stocks are down like 85% from their all-time highs, which is not the best thing. If you go ahead and look at these images real quick, you'll see the quintiles, you know, all these dividend payers, these people who pay dividend stocks, they increase their dividends, perform far better than just the average S&P 500, and especially those who don't pay dividends. You can just see, look at the difference, okay? That's a massive difference. That should really leave an impact and show you that dividend stock investing is a huge benefit. So let's go ahead and talk about living off of a $2.5 million dividend stock portfolio. The number's actually not $2.5 million, that's a mistake. The actual number is $2,945,000, and that's the portfolio size that I am aiming for. I want an average dividend yield of 4%, and you might have seen my current dividend yield is about 2.7%, and it might even fall lower. And the reason for that is because I'm aiming low yield, higher growth, getting a higher yield on cost, and as time goes on, as I get closer into the time when I plan on living from my portfolio alone, I will start to kind of sell off these lower yield stocks if there are any in my portfolio still and add into more higher yield. And then you want an annual dividend income about $117,800 a year. That's what that will lead to, okay? That gives you about a monthly income about $9,816.67 a month. Now you might be sitting there and being like, why do you want an average dividend yield of 4%? Well, to be honest, one thing is I'm very like hard on myself, I guess you could say, and so I'm giving myself a 4% dividend yield, although I know there's ETFs that provide like 8, 9, 10, 11, 12% dividend yields, and I could cut this number by a lot, but if I aim for 4% and then my yield is actually like 6, 7%, I won't even need a 2.945 million. Maybe it'll be, I don't know the exact math, maybe it'll be $2 million, whatever it might be, you know, so I think it's almost critical to be, not like beat yourself down, but be hard on yourself so you aim high, miss high. But you have to count taxes, and qualified dividend taxes are about 15%. So after taxes, my annual dividend income will be about $100,000 a year, which that is the goal income from dividends, completely passive, $100,130 to be exact, literally coming to me if I'm sleeping, doing whatever it might be, just from that. And my monthly income with that would be about $8,344.17. So how do I plan on achieving this? First off is by investing in solid companies and ETFs that I have a strong conviction in. Investing in accordance with my time horizon, not others. You know, you might see a YouTuber, you might be a 20-year-old watching a 40-year-old YouTuber who has a 10-year time horizon before they stop investing and they start living on their dividends, but maybe you have a 20-year time horizon, a 30-year. You need to invest in your time horizon and not others. Next up is adding as much capital that I can to my dividend portfolio like every single month or weekly. Any money that I get that comes in, a certain percent definitely goes into my portfolio. It just depends, you know, because I'm not working a 95 right now. I have different ventures, so I make a different amount of money every single month. Whatever I can spare goes into the portfolio, and as time goes on, income will go up, portfolio size will go up. So the income from like my business, ventures, etc., things like that, and no unnecessary excuses to not add money. That's one thing I think is critical. And by no unnecessary excuses, what I mean there is don't be like, oh, I want to go buy a PlayStation. Let me not invest $500 this month and I'll just buy a PlayStation. Like use that $500 from something else. Be consistent in your investments. And last, and next up is reinvesting these dividends. Like that is vital to success in dividend investing in the long term. Like reinvesting your dividends makes a huge difference. Okay remaining patient like you have to be patient when it comes to this and lastly is always sharpening my mind like the more you learn the more you earn and i strongly agree with that you know things like reading books articles study cases study cases are actually really knowledgeable really valuable like the information i showed you on that first slide about dividend stocks performing way better than other stocks was a study case it's insane how valuable these are you know watching videos like you're watching a video right now the more you learn, the more you earn, and I can't stress that. But everybody, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Thank you for making it to the end. I really appreciate you watching it. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on any future videos just like this one. Leave a comment below what you like about this video, what you plan on doing with your portfolio. I always like to hear your guys' input. Check out M1 Finance if you haven't already. Use the link in the description or the pinned comment down below. You deposit $50 into the account. 
you'll get fifty free dollars back. It's a hundred percent ROI, just like that. Again, thank you for making the end of this video, and I will see you at the next one.